everybody. Today I'm reviewing this 3D welding puzzle in the shape of a soccer ball. Um, the review will be about two things. Uh, the first is the details of the kit and what you get when you buy it. And the second will be the things that I learned along the way as a very first time stainless steel TIG welder, um, never having touched stainless steel uh, before I did this. So first, here, here's the details of the puzzle kit. The puzzle's made of 32 pieces of 1 8 inch stainless steel hexagon in two sizes. There's a small and a large. Um, the quality of the kit is really, really good. Um, the plates or the pieces are pre really precision cut. All the sides are exactly the same. Um, there were a few pieces that had one corner that had just a little small burr uh, on it um, that I had to file off to make sure the, the joints would line up correctly and I wouldn't you know, get a, a mangled ball. One big detail is there are no instructions. <laughs> and so, but I think the point of that is that it's a puzzle. And so you're supposed to figure out how to put this thing together on your own. Um, and that's part of the process of learning. I did look at a few soccer ball pictures online just so I knew what the, di the different shapes or the different sizes of hexagons needed to be in the pattern when it was done. But figuring out at which angle each joint needs to be at and uh, how to hold the pieces together uh, when you're assembling it. Um, all those things you had to figure out on your own on the fly. Um, and one thing that's different about stainless steel, um, if you've done any welding before, is that magnets don't stick to it. And so all the normal tricks and techniques you have for getting magnets and holding things together don't work so good with stainless steel. The goal is to practice not just welding, but all the fabrication tools and techniques um, that you need along the way and to have some fun while you're doing it. So the second part of the review is how did I do? What was easy? What wasn't so easy? And what did I learn? Generally speaking, it was not that difficult. If you welded any kind of normal plain steel um, TIG welding before, um, it was actually a little easier than that, I thought, um, or at least the cleanly, I, I should say, let me back up. Cleanliness in stainless steel is super duper important and even TIG welding anything cleanliness is important But stainless steel is really really important. And so um, Cleaning all the materials is really I think what made this much easier than I normally do with stainless steels Because I don't think I'm as diligent cleaning plain steel as I was with this because I knew this had to be clean And so everything got acetoned off everything I cleaned up my workbench everything it was clean and so that, I think, would make any TIG welding project easier and better. It, it certainly did so for this. So the first bit of learning was that the amperage requirements for stainless steel are not the same as plain steel. Uh, in fact, stainless steel takes about 35% less amps than plain steel. So while I'd normally weld 1 8 inch steel at 125 amps, uh, using the 1 amp per thousandth of an inch rule, I set my machine up at 85 amps and it welded just fine. The puddle started nice and um, quickly and I was able to um, get moving relatively quickly to get, um, to get a dab of filler metal in there. And that's where the second bit of knowledge popped up. These parts are 1 8 inch thick and so uh, if this was plain steel, I'd normally choose a filler rod that was a little thinner than the, the material I'm welding. And so 1 8 inch would be um, maybe down to 3 30 seconds. And so that's the filler rod I chose to use. So when I go to add a dab of filler rod, it would stick in the puddle just a, t a tiny bit enough to where when I pulled it out of the puddle, my part would jiggle around a lot because it was sticking. And so what did I do to correct that? I figured it must not be hot enough. So I stepped on the gas pedal a little bit harder to make it, to make it hotter. But that was really the wrong choice because then my weld beads started um, overheating and they were getting a little hazy and gray and so I could tell they were too hot. A better choice would have been to step down a filler rod size, maybe down to 1 16th of an inch. Um, I'm guessing that the, the heat requirement difference from stainless steel to plain steel um, also affects the filler rod choice. And so you might wanna drop down another filler rod size um, if you're welding stainless steel um, compared to if you were welding plain steel. And dull looking weld beads brings me to my next bit of knowledge, and that's gas coverage. I'm using a number 12 Furic cup. Um, the electrodes stick out is about half inch to five eighths of an inch. And normally I run anywhere between 12 and 15 inches uh, cubic feet per hour of uh, welding gas pressure. 
And so on plain steel, that seems to work out pretty good for me. It's probably too big of a cup for, you know, for that, but I'm a beginner and I'm trying to weed out as many variables as I can. Um, but when I first did my first weld bead here is that is that this these six um, sides here, you can kind of see they're not too impressive, uh, even for a beginner. And so I don't know a whole lot about TIG welding, but I know enough of that if it's not shiny, it probably means that it's oxidizing and it's either too hot or it doesn't have enough gas coverage. And so since I was pretty sure it wasn't um, my amperage settings or it wasn't too hot, gas coverage was the only thing I could try out. So I increased the uh, CFH to about 20 and got much better results. It was like night and day. I started seeing some purple and blue and yellow hazing and all kinds of neat little colors. And that's where it got fun. Depending on how long I held the um, post flow over an area after welding bead, the color would change. And so I noticed that um, if I welded really fast along one bead, I'd get a different color than if I was really um, turning turning the amperage down and going a little bit slower along the way, I'd get, a, I'd get a different color. So I noticed that the colors would change depending on how long you kept the gas flow over the weld bead. So I don't have an exact chart on um, which more gas equals more blues or yellows or whatever it is, but um, I'm sure someone has figured that out online. I'm probably not the first one to make this discovery. And so it was just really fun for me. I've, I realized after I'd been doing it for a few minutes, it was like uh, it was Christmas morning and I was 10 years old again and I was just waiting to see what was going to come out of the box and the present I got. And so that was, that was fun and entertaining and uh, it made um, the task of learning and, and welding that sometimes gets a little boring. It made it kind of fun and enjoyable. And so that was a big part of, of, of the pleasantness of, of getting this kit and welding it up. Now don't confuse this as some sort of super expert welding demonstration where I get to show off all my skills uh, on the internet and everyone gets to, you know, say what a great job I did. It's not very good. I mean, it is um, really inconsistent. There are some places where the weld bead was better than others. Um, I, was, I thought that one was not too terrible. Um, there was some spot, there was a, a spot where I very first started, I kind of blew through in that example where I, I turned the heat up um, to try and get the filler rod to, to melt quicker and it just oxidized um, wherever I got it marked here you know it, it just oxidized the weld and so there's a few spots on there that were not very good still trying to figure out how to get consistent um, bead timing and, and all that stuff and the fact that it, the rod was sticking in there kept jiggling the the part as I was you know trying to trying to weld and so it became Kind of tricky and so i had to you know add a clamp and weight it down and do some things like that so i do think if you're just starting out stainless steel tig welding this kit is a great option it's a great way to learn a bunch of different little skills all at one time and have some fun while you're doing it it's got enough pieces and difficulty that it take it'll take you a, a good couple of hours of welding and fitting and and doing all this stuff that it's it's not just a five minute thing that you're you get you know, you do it and you're done and you're bored. And all that stuff um, gets you to figure out um, how to hold pieces together, how to hold the torch at all these different angles, um, how to make the torch shorter so you can fit in a tiny little, you know, concave bowl to get a tack weld on the inside. You know, something I hadn't had to do um, before today. All that means is just more, way more fun than welding on a flat piece of plate you know, over and over again, even though that's probably, if you've never TIG welded before, that's definitely what you should do before you spend any money on weird kits and stuff like that. And so if I had to give this a rating out of five stars, I'd give it a four and a half, solidly, easily four and a half. The only half star that I would deduct uh, is related to the price. And so funny story is when I bought this, um, I thought this was a $50 kit when I bought it. Um, and for some reason that 50 bucks sticks in my mind. I'm hoping it was really $50. So it's $50 is an expensive, you know, it's an expensive thing for just a couple hours of, of work and practice, but you do learn a lot. And so it's hard to, it's hard to discount it for that. But when I went to, um, to look it up online today, um, it was $83. And so it was even more. So if it was 83 bucks, I'm a little more sad than if it was 50 bucks but I still think it was worthwhile as a way to get started um, in, in welding stainless steel. 
So $83 is an expensive puzzle to get if you've never TIG welded anything before. And so I definitely not recommend it if this is your first time TIG welding. But if you're wanting to up your game in stainless steel, I think it's a great option if you if you got the $83 to spare. Um, it appears that they're out of stock right now, so but you may check back in in a few weeks. Maybe they'll have them restocked. The other kind of bonus with this is that you get kind of a cool trophy to put on your shelf at the end, kind of as a reward for all the hard work you did. So that's all I got. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you for the next one. But wait, I totally forgot one important thing about safety. Uh, welding stainless steel uh, is a little dangerous in that it gives off a poisonous gas called hexavalent chromium. And so you really do need to wear respiratory protection when you're using it. Get a fan, evacuate air as best you can. I'll put a link up here to a guy I follow uh, for what kind of welding tips. He's really good. Um, he has a more detailed video kind of a, of the dangers of that. Um, and so wear some rep respiratory protection. I got this 3M 2097. Um, respirator. Um, it's good. It's not hot. It actually fits underneath my welding helmet too. So um, there's, there's a few different styles of that. So um, go do that. Have fun. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.